Hello, Cornerstone. This is Pastor Morgan. Welcome to the midweek uh, encouragement message. I am a few hours late in giving the message, but nevertheless, I'm here and want to share with you the Word of God. Last Wednesday, Pastor Sherry and I were in Dominican Republic, and we, in fact, had a tremendous crusade. The very opening night, they, there was one of the most explosive miracles I've ever seen when they brought to us a young lady who had broken a foot, a bone in her foot. She, she was helped to the front with two people, one on each side, and she was holding her, her foot up, you know, off the ground. You could tell in pain, could, wouldn't, wouldn't, obviously wouldn't allow that foot to touch the ground. They sat her in a chair. And so I left the platform, went down there where she was. Pastor Sherry joined me there. And we began having a conversation with her. <laughs> Amen. And while we were talking, the power of the Lord came upon her. And she literally began to shake. And so then we prayed for her, laid our hand on her, prayed for her. And when we did that, the power of God instantly healed her. She leaped out of her chair. So much of the chair goes flying backwards uh, and she leaps. And just like the Bible said of the man, Acts chapter three, leaping and walking and praising God. This young lady was leaping and walking and praising God. And man, it was powerful. It was so powerful. And man, it was awesome. And then, then again, another uh, miracle. Uh, wow, it was, it was a young boy brought to us that was uh, both deaf and mute. His mother brought him for prayer. And as we, as we ministered to him, as we ministered to him, the Lord healed him. And what happened was, as, as I was ministering to him, I turned to the, one, of the song, uh, one of the song leaders. And I said to him, I said, get ready to lead this young man in a chorus to sing. You ask me, well, why did you do that? Well, Isaiah chapter 35, verse 6, God prophesied the tongue of the mute or old English dumb, the tongue of the dumb will sing. I mean, obviously, most of the time, what we would do is just pray for them and see if they could talk. Well, God said they'd sing. So I, I put a microphone, we put a microphone in his mouth, and, and that singer began to sing in his ear, and, and that little boy started to sing. Praise the Lord. And the more he sang, the louder he got. And I looked out over the crowd and people were weeping and crying because just, uh, just so touching to see that little boy miraculously healed. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, I want to tell you that God's still doing miracles today. The days of miracles are not past. Uh, Pastor Sherry and I have witnessed these kinds of miracles in every country we've been to. And I'm telling you, in the last year, year and a half, there has been an increase. There's been an increase in that uh, intensity of those miracles. Uh, many of you have heard our testimonies from Uganda and our testimonies from the Philippines. And man, it has been powerful. But I'm telling you, those same miracles are happening right here in America, America especially as you allow the Word of God to renew your mind, change the way you think. Uh, many, many places, I hate to say this, but many places... Uh, they don't really preach the gospel. They don't preach the gospel. What they preach is Christian philosophy. It's a philosophy that is not the revelation of Jesus. It's not the revelation of what Jesus has done. And so you don't get, God doesn't confirm that word. There's no power attached to that. But the gospel is powerful. The gospel is, the Bible said, the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so don't ever allow yourself to think, wow. He has those miracles or those kind of miracles or God does those kind of miracles on the mission field, but he doesn't do them in America. That's not true. That's absolutely not true. We've seen, we've seen miracles right here in America over and over and over again. Praise the Lord. Now, let me get right into the message and I'm going to just start kind of where I was last Wednesday and continue talking about this. Uh, this is important. This is, this is, this is basic. This is foundational, but I'm telling you it's foundational to the power of God in your life, and you experiencing the power of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is, it is the power of God. So the gospel is the power of God. So, you know, it's, it's my belief that we should do a search of the gospel, find out every truth of the gospel, and identify that truth and make a conscious decision to believe it. And wherever in that revelation that contradicts the, our way of thinking, our way of talking, we should discard all of that. We should, the Bible uses the word repent, change the way we think, 
and align our thinking with the truth of the Bible. And, and so the power flows. The gospel is the power of God. I always like to add the power of God. That's omnipotence. That power is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Not only did it come in you when you were saved, but that power continues to abide and remain inside of you. Praise God. He said, it's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes. Everyone that believes. So that includes you and that includes me. It includes you right now. It includes me right now. Uh, I said to the Jew first, but also to the, to the Greek. Now, verse 17, he said, for therein, that is the gospel, in the gospel, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, even as is written, the just shall live by faith. But he said, for therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed. And so the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. One of the points that I made last uh, Wednesday is the fact that spiritual reality is revealed. It cannot be felt. I mean, you have to accept that. You cannot feel spiritual reality. Now, I also want to add to that. Now, there is an awareness that can be built up in us as we look at these scriptures and believe them and meditate in them and confess them. There's a spiritual awareness, a spiritual perception that can arise in our heart. And But even still, even that sometimes isn't always there. Because why? Because you get busy with life. But it doesn't change. That, that thing is static. That thing is constant. It doesn't, it doesn't fluctuate. Uh, the righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel. So spiritual reality cannot be felt. Cannot be felt. You trying to feel spiritual reality is like me asking you the question, what does the sun smell like? Well, the moment I say that, you know that's a weird question because your sense of, of smell cannot perceive uh, the sun. Well, you need a different, in other words, you need a different sense for the sun. And what's that? That's your eyes. Uh, or we ask you this question, what does the sun taste like? Well, you're trying to use a sense that doesn't make sense. You wouldn't say, that, what does the sun taste like? Again, you'd say, what does the sun look like? So you're trying to use the wrong sense to perceive the sun. Uh, or we can say it like this, what does that steak, what does that steak sound like? Well, that's a, again, that's a weird question because your, 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 your hearing is not the sense that you need to use to, to uh, see what the steak tastes like. You need to use your taste. Or we might say it like this, what does that music look like? Well, you don't use your eyes to evaluate music, you use your ears. So my point is, if you use the wrong sense to try to, uh, uh, perceive or, or feel or hear or taste, whatever, anything, it, it, it doesn't make sense. It, it's weird. It, it, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Same thing. You, you're trying to feel physically, trying to feel spirituality. It doesn't work. It's like trying to, trying to taste the sun, trying, trying to like, you know, what does the sun take? What does the sun sound like? Or, or what does that steak sound like? Using the wrong thing. Or if your soul, your mind, your will, and emotions, you're emotionally trying to say, what does spiritual reality feel like? In other words, is it happy? Is it sad? Is it, is it mad? No, no, it's none of those things. You, can't, you, cannot, you cannot determine spiritual reality by how you feel in your body or how you feel in your soul. Well, because it is revealed. And it's revealed in the Bible. It's revealed in the scripture. And the Bible said faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So I hear the word, I hear what God said, I hear what God promised, I hear what Christ provided, and I make a decision. So in that sense, faith is a decision. I decide to believe that. This is what I believe. The greatest thing about faith is not how big is your faith. People make that, make that mistake all the time. Think, well, my faith is small, or, or my faith is not big enough, or, or even might say, even I have great faith. Well, uh, it, Th those, you shouldn't measure your faith. That, you shouldn't measure your faith. That's not, that's not the point. The point is, what do you believe? What do you believe? Well, when you believe the gospel and the truth that's revealed in the gospel, then it becomes power in your life. It becomes power in your life. So we believe it. We believe what the Bible says. Amen. Good news. It's good news of what Christ has done, what Christ has provided. We believe that. 
and it becomes power inside of us. Amen. So what is revealed? The righteousness of God is revealed in the scripture. It's revealed. It's not revealed in my, my body with my five senses. It's not revealed in my soul with the, with the way I feel in my soul emotionally. It's revealed in the scripture and I believe it. I believe it and it's true. It's true. And then what's true and what I believe, I confess. I talk like that. This is what I say. Confession literally means saying the same thing as. I'm going to say exactly what God says. Like I said last week, the greatest number one revelation of the new covenant is that God through Christ has made you the righteousness of God. The greatest number one revelation of the new covenant, what we're supposed to confess, is to confess that we've been made the righteousness of God. Now, let me look here in Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, uh, verse 19. He says, we know that what things serve the law says, it says to them who are under the law, that every mouth that be stopped on all the world become guilty before God. So he's giving us the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law was given uh, to reveal sin so that we would acknowledge the fact that we need a savior. It, it has no power to save us. It's just kind of like going to the doctor and the doctor has an x-ray and he x-rays you. X-ray can't, can't help you, can't, can't, can't uh, cure you or heal you. It simply reveals a problem. So the law is an x-ray that reveals a problem, but then it points us to a solution. And that solution is Jesus. Amen. He says, he said that all the world may, may, that every mouth may be stopped and all the world become guilty before God. That's the purpose of the law. Verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified. There shall no flesh be made righteous in his sight. So even if a person could keep every, every commandment, every dot, every I cross every T, he still would not be righteous in the sight of God. By the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. Again, that's the purpose of the law. This law does what? The law reveals sin. It gives us a knowledge of sin. And so we realize we need a savior. We turn to Christ and put our faith in him, and he does a powerful work in our life. Now, verse 21. He says, now again, verse 20, the, the, by the law is the knowledge of sin, verse 21, but now, I love this, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Think about that. Now, in other words, by the law is the knowledge of sin, but now the righteousness of God without the law, without the law is manifested. So he said, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Man, when I saw that, I said, wow. So the law and the prophets were, were testifying, were prophesying that there was going to come a change. And that change is, is that we would be made righteous by the perfect work of Christ and our faith in his perfect sacrifice. That's what would make us righteous. Amen. And, and that's beautiful. So I said, okay, let me give you a couple of those Old Testament scriptures, law and the prophets, that began to testify, that testified of the fact that, uh, that, that there, was a law, there was a righteousness without the law. Now, I'll, I'll read Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah. I love Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6. He's here prophesying about the coming of Jesus. I love this verse. He said, in his days, meaning the days of Jesus, in his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. He said, this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Now, first of all, that's the Hebrew word Jehovah Tzidkenu. That is a covenant name of God. But notice here that he, that he adds something here that, it, that just a tremendous revelation. That the Lord is the Lord, our righteousness. He has become my righteousness. That's what that scripture says. His name shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Well, you know, we could say the Lord is righteous. We could say the Lord is the righteous one. He's the righteous one all by himself. He is the righteous one all by himself. 
Amen. But this revelation says he became our righteousness. Wow. So what happened? Jesus bore our sins in his own body as if they were his own. He bore our sins in his own body as if they were his own. Second Corinthians chapter five and 21 said he became sin with our sin. So he bore my sin, he became my sin, and the Bible said he put that sin away by the sacrifice of himself. And so Jesus died bearing my sin as if they were his own, but then three days later, three days later, him having fully paid the price of my sins, he having fully paid the debt we, you know, sin is, is, is looked at as debt, something that I owe God. It was a debt I could never pay, but Jesus fully paid the debt. Him, Jesus, having fully suffered the penalty, all of the penalty of all of my crimes, of all of my sin. So that sin is done away with. That is, it's, it's a debt that's been paid. It's a, it's a, it's a crime that's already been punished. Praise the Lord. And Jesus rose from the dead. He rose from the dead glorious. He rose from the dead victorious. He rose from the dead righteous. So he died. He died bearing my sin if it were his own. But then he rose from the dead. Having put that sin away, he rose from the dead fully and completely righteous. But now, according to the Bible, he is, he is my righteousness. He's my righteousness. Jesus himself is my righteousness, praise the Lord. And he, when I received him, he came to live inside of me. He came to live in me, praise God. Jesus came to live inside of me, praise the Lord. He is my righteousness, praise the Lord, amen. That becomes my confession. He, Jesus, is my righteousness. So how righteous are you? Well, you are the same, I mean, you're as righteous as Jesus, how can that be? Wow, how can that be? Because he himself is your righteousness. How welcome are you into the presence of God? As welcome as Jesus is. Think about that. Jesus died on the cross. He bore our sin. He became our sin. But when he rose to the dead, he had so put that sin away that he himself, you know, ascended to heaven, entered into the perfect presence of God and sat down on the right hand of the Father. That sin was totally put away. That, total, that sin was totally done away with. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it is in your life. As you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, as you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus himself has become your righteousness. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Then in the book of Isaiah, I love what Isaiah says. I, this is the last verse I'm going to deal with. In the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 45, verse, I believe it's verse 24, uh, God says there in that scripture, he said, he said, for in that day, one will say, someone will say, that's the prophecy. Isaiah would prophesy. He said, in that day, someone will say, in the Lord, I have righteousness and strength. In the Lord, I have righteousness and strength. That's a prophecy of Isaiah. So in the Lord, man, that's powerful. Because the moment I got born again, I become a new creation. I, the Bible said that I'm in Christ. I am in Christ. That's what Jesus said. John 14, 20, Jesus said that in that day, you will know that I'm in the Father and, I, and you are in me and I'm in you. Jesus said that in that day, you'll know that you're in me and I'm in you. So our position is in Christ. Our position is in Christ. In Christ is a, is a powerful, privileged place that we've been, we were placed into the moment we put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Isaiah 45, verse 24 says that in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, I have righteousness. So if I'm in the Lord, if I'm in Christ, then I have righteousness. Then he adds and strength. So it's not a weak position. It's a, it's a strength of God. It's a strength of God. Hallelujah. So the gospel reveals the righteousness of God. So what, what am I to say? Romans, here, I, I'm ending with the same verse that I ended with last time. Romans 10, verse 9 says, it says what? With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. It's verse 10. It, with Romans 10, 10. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, I really want you to take some time and look at that verse, Romans 10, 10. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. So, so what is the, what, what, what is the person believing in his heart? He believes, he believes in, in righteousness. He believes that Jesus made him righteous. Amen. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. He believes in the blood of Jesus. He believes in the, in the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. He believes that unto righteousness. He believes that unto righteousness. So the end of his faith is being made righteous. Amen. So he believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made. So stop right there. So what is he confessing? He believed unto righteousness. And now he's going to make a confession. Well, confession works. You say what you believe. Amen. I believe unto righteousness. Now I'm going to make a confession. I'm going to confess that I am righteous. I'm going to confess that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And the moment I do that, the Bible says that I experience salvation. So with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made into salvation. I am confessing that I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, faith works in every area. Believe in our heart, confess with our mouth. But in that verse, specifically, when he gave us that verse, he's telling us that the main subject, Romans, the whole book of Romans, the main subject of our faith, the main subject of our confession is to believe and confess that God has made us righteous. He is my righteousness. Hallelujah. In the Lord, I have righteousness. Romans 5, 17, he said, we receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Praise the Lord. So we no longer have this weak religious, Christian, philosophical confession. Oh, I'm a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner. No question about that. I was a sinner, but I put my faith in Christ. His grace changed me. The power of the Holy Spirit changed me and God made me the righteousness of God in Christ. And that now is my confession. That is my confession. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. The number one problem with faith, the number one problem with faith is that you believe something bad against yourself. You believe something bad about yourself. I mean, that, that, that's the main problem. Most Christians don't have a problem believing the Lord or believing the word of God. They just believe, it's, they just have our trouble believing it's true in their case. Why? Is it, that has nothing to do with the faith. That has nothing to do with faith of what you're trying to get. That has to do with faith in the foundational place of being made righteous. And the moment you fix that, the moment you address that, look at that, make a change in that, and just begin to focus on believing that you're the righteous of God in Christ, I'm telling you that your faith level, your faith level is going to go sky high. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you today, you need to get those verses together. And, uh, and, 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 you know, write them down, open your Bible, put your finger on them, speak them out loud, then make them personal and begin to confess them true about your own life. Begin to confess them true. Amen. That you are the righteous of God in Christ. That you're a new creation. Praise the Lord. And the scripture's full of them. But I've given you, I've given you a few of them here. You know, uh, Romans 10, uh, 10, 10. That's beautiful. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 23, 7. Uh, Isaiah uh, 45 verse 24. Praise the Lord. Find those verses. Uh, begin to begin to declare them. Begin to confess them as true in your life. Amen. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that's our teacher. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who's a spirit of wisdom and revelation that brings this revelation, Lord. Awakens the hearts of people to understand and see and believe this revelation, Lord. And believe that they are who you said they are. That they have what you said they have. And now they can do everything you said they can do. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for the power of God that flows right now into their life. Raises them up to a new level to experience a newness in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I love you. God bless you.